Joining me now is Nebraska Republican Congressman Don Bacon. And Congressman, thank you for being here. I, I want to start with your reaction to yesterday's Colorado Supreme Court ruling. Last year on Meet the Press, you criticized the president for his actions on January 6th. What do you make of this ruling and the fact that it concludes that Trump engaged in insurrection on the 6th? You know, I'm not a lawyer. First of all, thanks for having me on. I'm not a lawyer, but I suspect the Supreme Court will likely overturn this. I think the number one concern I hear, and I, I, and I would, would agree, the president's not been found guilty yet, uh, what through the impeachment process or uh, through the special prosecutor. And so you'd, it would, you would think he'd have to at least be found guilty in court or previously through the impeachment before Colorado could uh, rule this way. So I suspect the Supreme Court will take this on and likely will be overturned. Are you confident that there is a mechanism to find him guilty, though? I mean, the House wouldn't, con the Republicans wouldn't vote for his conviction on uh, impeachment or impe on impeaching him because he was out of office. Now he's arguing he's immune because these are actions that he took while he was president. If none of that works and he can't be kicked off a ballot here by judges, how do you hold somebody like him accountable? Well, you know, there's four different sets of indictments that are, that are going on right now. And one of them is uh, over January 6th and the events leading up to it. And I really think that is a legitimate area where, where the president could, could be scrutinized. You know, for us, the impeachment occurred after he left. Right. We weren't even sure at the time if that was the right way to go. So I do think it's through, you know, the courts right now that he, if so, a prosecutor wants to come forward, that this is the proper form to have that happen. So I... I there's a possibility he could be found guilty. And in that case, there could be you know, grounds for Colorado or other states to do this. But until there's a guilty finding by a jury or a judge, I don't see how states can, can do this. What do you weigh, make of the way, the manner in which so much of the party has rallied around Donald Trump every time we've seen some of these new legal challenges? Does that tell us more about the challenges themselves? Does it tell us more about the party? Uh, and, and what does that tell you about you know, his chances going forward, both in the primary and in November? Well, there's uh, two probably different perspectives. There is roughly half or 50% in the polling, you would, you would say that they think a lot of these charges are political. Mm -hmm. And like here with Colorado, he's not even been found guilty yet, and yet he's being taken off the ballot. Uh, I think others are concerned. We're looking at 90 different indictments as well. And I want to get a Republican in the White House. And I want someone that can carry our message strongly, whether it's the border, uh, it's, uh, strengthening our alliances, uh, getting our spending under control. And I think it's, so it's, I, it's more important for me to make sure we have someone the most competitive person we can get in there to actually take the White House back. Because it's hard to overcome a president that's that's liberal or left to center. We see it with Joe Biden, his executive orders are, are hurting us at the border, they're hurting us in the military. And so I, I'm for trying to get the best candidate we can uh, that can take it back. And, and I, so I think the indictments hurt him in winning uh, a year from now or, or next November. Um, when you guys come back to Washington next year, the impeachment inquiry, I think, is going to be a, one of the issues on the front burner. Ahead of last week's vote, you had said that the inquiry doesn't necessarily mean you have high crimes or misdemeanors. You said at the time that you might not ever know that. I wonder what you make of the possibility that this inquiry is something that just stays open through the election. Or would you be prepared to acquit President Biden if you never see evidence that meets your standards here? Well, we should go where the evidence lies. Frank, frankly, I was opposed to an inquiry three or four months ago because the mm -hmm. president was providing all the information that was being subpoenaed. But three weeks ago, we put in a letter that since we didn't have a formal inquiry vote, they didn't have to provide the information that was being requested. So I felt like he forced her hand in doing the inquiry. My sus I suspect, or I think most Americans look at what's going on here, $24 million in foreign money, 20 LLCs to help move the money around. We want to just get to the truth of that. And my view of it is there may not be a high crime or misdemeanor, but it sure looks bad. And I think it's corruption using the, fam the family name. And I think the voters should just know the truth. And if they, if it bothers them, okay, they're going to vote one way. If it doesn't, they'll vote another way. But I think our, our job is to provide the truth and let the voters decide. Do you have any sense of how long this inquiry is expected to last? Is that something you all have talked about behind closed doors here? Uh, not to put a lot of pressure on you, Congressman, but you guys have a lot of real work to get done in January when you get back. Well, we do have 20 committees, and you're right, there's two committees that are focused on this. I'm on the Armed Services Committee, mm -hmm. the Ag Committee. We put no focus on the impeachment, so we'll be getting a lot of other things done. But I, I don't want to make this political. 
And obviously impeachment is going to have some political aspects to it. I don't, I don't think impeachments are good for our country. And it, it should be a very clear high crime or misdemeanor. And we should do this by the book, methodical. I think we should do this more Watergate style. I think the uh, Democrats in the last Congress, or Speaker Pelosi anyway, cut corners on both impeachments. And we should do this by the book and methodical. But once we realize there, there is not a high crime or misdemeanor, we should move on. Uh, we should treat the American people right on this and play it by the book. I mean, I would argue that impeachments are almost entirely a political exercise, but I take your point. Um, are, do you worry at all that the, the voters, the American public broadly, just kind of isn't where Washington is anymore on impeachment? The last two impeachments did not appear to have much of an impact on uh, Donald Trump. I guess you could argue about the second one, but certainly not the first one. Do you think the American public cares about this issue in any substantive way anymore? I think they do, but I, I've heard from voters both ways on this. I've heard from some they don't like the inquiry. I've heard from others thanking me for voting that way. Uh, let's be honest, though. If this is perceived as being a revenge impeachment or a, a politicized impeachment, and as you say, all impeachments have political aspects to it, but if it's seen as being as a political weapon, it will hurt the Republicans. So we should be very careful and do this right. You know, I think the impeachments hurt the Democrats. They went backwards and, and uh, you know, the in both elections. I think the impeachment under Bill Clinton hurt the Republicans, if, if you know, if my history is right on that. Mm -hmm, that's right. So if we don't handle this right, and if it looks like we're using it as a political weapon, I will come back to bite us. So I, I encourage our team to be very, very cautious and prudent in how we go forward. Congressman, last question. This Congress that just concluded, this year of Congress just concluded, is going to go down in history as one of the least productive Congresses in modern history. Can you tell the American people that a Republican-controlled House is going to get more done next year than you were able to do in your first year in the majority? I would say yes, but what, what we've seen this past year is divided government. And Which you'll still have it, next right year. Have two, we, will, we have a two-seat majority in the House out of 435 members, a two-seat majority in the Senate, different parties. I think the, the biggest thing we have to get done is solving the border crisis. It's the worst it's ever been. We had 14,000 people come in one day this week. You know, under President Obama, the metric was 1,000. It was over 1,000 was seen as an emergency. Mm -hmm. So I think we're close to getting an agreement with the Senate, uh, House, with Republicans and Democrats. And that's been the challenge. We could pass things out of the House. Uh, but we necessarily can't get that same legislation through the Senate. We got to work together and find areas of consensus. And I, I appreciate Senator Sinema, Senator yeah. Langford, Senator Murphy. By the way, I met with them in the Senate. I think they're about 90, 95 percent. But that could be a great win for America. Wow. And we also need to get a budget line number early so that we can do a, appropriations in a much more uh, decent way. It's not right to our military or all the other parts of our government to have four or five months of CRs or continuing resolutions like we're doing now. Well, so Congressman, I, if we, we get a top line early, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we got to leave it there. That's a Christmas wish list for this next Congress that uh, even yeah. Santa would blush at. But we got to stop there. I'm an you. optimist. I appreciate that. I, John Bacon, <laughs> thank you for being with us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.